Hello there, welcome, this is Draco, and today we'll be playing some more uh, magic with uh, Modern Merfolk. Um, and we are today we're going to test out some new cards, so this is going to be really interesting. This is the first in my three-part series where we will try to uh, adjust the deck, testing out different uh, options, and, and seeing if we can uh, beat the, the meta that is starting to formulate. So really glad to have you here. We're going to have a blast. We're going to have some cool matches. We're going to have some interesting uh, ways to see how the cards work. We're going to interest, uh, test out some interesting cards, um, and we're going to discuss uh, the deck tech uh, and the different opponents we're playing. So. Uh, glad you're here. Uh, before we get started, uh, I had a great uh, comment on a YouTube channel from uh, Goran Ellis, who actually had a really cool uh, question that I also want to pass on to you guys. He says that um, he he and I have two different uh, ways of uh, using uh, Merfolk Trickster against Ragavan particularly. And Ragavan, of course, is one of uh, the hard cards to play against, and Trickster is one of our best options. Um, he, he noticed that I was often using it after um, Ragavan attacked to remove the Ragavan ability and then trying to block uh, and thereby they're presenting the answer uh, to, to take it off and uh, instead uh, Goran says that um, his take is to tap it uh, how, uh, with how, how many tricks he have and rendering it obsolete with uh, too many blockers in a later, later turn so he can start by chaining uh, you know, tricks and ma making sure that he can have a broad board so a removal spell will not be enough um, and this way he says that the Ragavans in hand are also stuck. So just want to pass that through to the fish community. Put in the comment uh, which uh, of these different approaches or are a different approach. Are you, how are you using the Merfolk Tricksters uh, against the Ragavan? Let us know. Uh, and uh, thanks for the, th for the comment, Koran. Um, before we get into the deck tech, I just want to say that uh, if you like what I do here, uh, give me a, a like on the video and especially to uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Uh, and also, you can see me on uh, uh, Twitch and um, and uh, and Twitter. Uh, so make sure you check that one out. They are also in the comment section. Um, but let's get into the deck tech. Let's get into the deck tech. Okay, so this is the deck we'll be running today. We got um, small changes. Um, of course, as many of you know, I I normally run with eight seas effects and eight lords, and then a really tight uh, deck. So we haven't changed the mana base. It's still the, the same where we have double auto aura um, and we have uh, only three uh, glass pool mimics, um, but then we have 22 lands total. We want to really be able to play our auto auras when possible. We also have four mood vaults, which are performing great and are, are pressure points, especially with the eight lords. But some of the things we've changed um, around here is that we've cut down on uh, the amount of um, spreading seas we have in the main deck. Now we're down to two. And this is because Spring Seas is not uh, as potent at the moment. Um, th this gives us a couple of extra flex spots, and we put in a couple of uh, Harpingers of the Tides. They are really good right now against Merc Tide. I'm not quite sure if this is a sideboard card uh, you, you put in against Merc Tide, or this is a main deck card, but we're going to test it out in the main deck. We also have uh, another great tech we saw from um, someone playing in a live event uh, using a March of the Swirling Mist. This is like our new uh, pet card that uh, Neon Dynasty uh, gave us, and I've used it a bit in uh, Historic at some point, because it allowed us to to get, um, you can both, when you face out, you can both make your team able to attack in, uh, but you can also use it as a timber play, um, removing, removing their attackers, and then attacking in next turn. So really interesting card, um, and we're going to test it out a bit today to see how this performs. Um, Another thing is, of course, we're changing a lot in the sideboard. This time we, we are trying to test out if we can use Hercule Tree Call. But another fun thing we're doing is that we're also running with Flusterstorm. So Flusterstorm is an interesting card. It's really good against Storm, um, because when they use Grape Shot or um, Empty the Warrants, uh, it'll be able to counter uh, not only the, the, the last trigger, but it can, it, it can actually tr it, uh, use them all uh, on, on all the different um, Storm cards that are being cast. Another thing that's cool about it is that uh, it often just uh, acts as a spell pierce type effect, uh, where you can uh, just counter something for one mana. But it's just a, a really strong card. Be, um, and, and imagine a situation against Cascade, it, where it can it can counter all the Cascade cards. And ima imagine a situation. Some of the issues with Cascade and especially Living End is that they play their Violent Outburst in our upkeep, and then they have um, Force of Negation up. 
to uh, to 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 counter uh, the counters that we use. But now with one blue mana, we'll be able to uh, take out their force negation in our turn. So we may be able to both use counter spell and uh, use uh, or use uh, force negation and use fluster storm in the same turn. That's four mana. But uh, we're, we're testing it out if this can work. I've, I've had many people um, arguing that I should definitely try this card. So so we're gonna try this today. Um, of, okay, but. Um, Let's uh, let's let's get on with it. Let's get into the games. Let's get into the games. And uh, I definitely see that there are some different uh, matchups we need to be aware of now. The the, the meta game is formulating a bit. Uh, Four color Yorian looks strong. We have um, of course Murktide looks strong. We got uh, Grith Grixis Death Shadow still looking strong. We got. Um, Oh, let's see this hand. Mm, yeah, you can keep this. I think this is fine. Oh, Yaganza. What could this be? What could this be? Okay, there could be many cards. So Yaganza just just means that they don't, they can't play with, um, for example, Jace Vine Scorpler because he has two pips of blue. They need to have only one pip of blue in the mana cost or, or one pip of red or whatever. It can be gold cards, of course. Anyway, we're going to keep this. Um, I also still think Hammer Time is good, so we need to be aware of that as well. This is not Hammer Time. Blood Crypt into Ragavan. So our question from the intro from Goran uh, immediately becomes relevant as we're talking Trickster uh, and Ragavan. And let me know in the comments what do you do, what would you do here? Here uh, he he actually hit an either vial. That's not good. He can play that. <laughs> we draw a Lord. And now the situation comes up here. So the way I do it is different than uh, than what Goran is saying. Um, I like to get Regiment to, to attack again. Uh, and let him do it now. Thereby I'll uh, nullify the effect of him hitting me. But uh, I'll still um, pose him the question, do you want to trade? But maybe, uh, maybe Goran's... Uh, Line is stronger here best because then he would be able to chain tricksters. That's actually not that bad. So actually here I tap it down instead. Maybe I was I was thinking like Goran shortly. We're doing a little tricks here. Okay. Uh, this was actually a misclick. I was frustrated here. When I put down the Muda Vault, uh, it changed the lands around and I accidentally clicked on the island. Damn, because of course we wanted to trickster again now. But so this was a this was not bad. We need to tap the Muda Vault for the Either Vial, but I clicked on the Either Vial in hand and then clicked uh, the island out there. So this was bad. But now we need to adjust our play um, depending on our play mistake. Um, and now we are just gonna say we can block with Muda Vault. So we have two blockers for the Ragaman. What can he do here? He'll put in uh, Grixis Death Shadow, or a Death Shadow, that's a 1-1. One, one. A big one. And now it's a 3-3. Three, three. And it takes in. Okay, so considering here, what do we want to block with? Let's just block with the Trickster. And he passes. Okay, let's hope uh, we can uh, get a good draw here. He'll just put your gun sign hand, and we'll draw a card. It's an island. This is fine. So we could either go for the trickster play on Death Shadow to tap it down, or we could uh, just play out Svea Loon at this moment. Um, next turn we'll be able to use either vial. Okay, so we're going for the tricks to play. I think that's better because playing out Svea Loon could be dangerous uh, against Fatal Push when they have a treasure token. They can just sack their treasure token. And now the Death Shadows are 5-5. Five, five. We can get hit by a 5-5. Five, five. So let's uh, let's tip that down. down. And next turn we can make Svea Loon indestructible, both with Mutable activation and an either vial from Lord Valentis. Now he plays down Yaganza. So uh, pretty vanilla 5-5. Five, five. Of course, he can tap it for mana, but I don't think that's relevant against uh, in that uh, Grixis Death Shadow deck. It's not that relevant.
we draw a Spreading Seas. Uh, we can't really take him off mana here. One of the reasons why the Spreading Seas is a bit down at the moment is that many of these mid-range decks, they have so good mana. The Yunt deck can be um, bad with their mana, uh, I know. Um, so sometimes that could be good. So here we're just gonna go all in on Lords. I think that's a better play than Sphere Loon because we can hit him for uh, lethal here and hopefully he doesn't have anything. So I think that's the right play. So luckily our um, our little mistake didn't didn't cost us. Okay, so against against Quixus Death Shadow, um, of course we want the dismembers. Um, they're good against Ragavan, um, and you can consider dismembers uh, as a um, yeah. I'm still considering it's a domain card, main deck card, or a sideboard card. But I like them uh, in this meta right now. Or maybe they are even necessary for us to have something to interact with. I also see people playing gut shots, so that could also be, be in consideration. We let's, uh, but um, we're considering also Flusterstorm, just because they have uh, a lot of spells and just can't ring a spell with a one mana. But maybe that's too bad, uh, not not good enough. Uh, Harbingers is actually pretty. Um, yeah, that's a consideration. But of course, tapping down or uh, bouncing uh, Grixis, uh, Grixis Shadow could be. Could be relevant. March, I don't think they're that good here uh, in this ma matchup. Maybe they are. Maybe they're just too cute. I need uh, I need the Fluster Storms and I need the Dismembers. Force Negation is too um, expensive to. It's, it's too hard to to throw two cards away against that. So let's test out Fluster Storm instead. Also, just to see could Frost Storm be good in this matchup. Uh, either Vials are less interesting because they'll just use Thoughtseize and stuff like that and uh, outgrind us that way. Uh, this hand, this hand, mm. ah, that's tough. Uh, we got a lot of good cards. We have this member, um, and we're on the draw. So I think it's decent, even though it's a one lander. Uh, we both have either vial, and we have this member, and we have really we have all the good cards. So even though it's a one lander, uh, we need to just draw one land at some point um, because then we can use spring seas. Okay, we draw Sphere Loon, but we still got a, a turn or two to draw, and we can get down either vial to get value. I think this is such a great hand that you need to you need to keep this even though it's a one lander, but on the draw, you know. Okay, Dragon Rich Chandler. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's a good card. We can maybe trickster it down, but we didn't draw land. Unlucky here. Um, but we can throw down the relic, and the relic is a good answer to uh, Dragon Rich Chandler. Then it will just be a one one, even though it it'll still generate value. Look how angry it is. It's a Rage Channeler. And now we can see if we can trade with it. Or block it with the Tide Chamber. Because the Tide Chamber is of course a 2-2. So we'll uh, get that in from neither vial. And now Colligan's Command. That's a pretty big blowout. He gets two takeoffs off our either vial. Um, even though I think it was a good play to try to ambush it with the 2-2 here. And we didn't even draw a land now. So we need to crack this. And we don't find a land. So this is like four draws without a land so that is pretty rough and he he got to take off our either vial that's another reason why the either vials might be uh, bad in this matchup because they have post board three colgans command and um, i think that's uh that's a noteworthy uh, thing uh, they'll sign it in because it can just uh, you know kill off a creature they always get a two for one now they even can dispute our two two so i think now it's looking so bad we, we drew a harbinger so we're not we're not in this game pretty good. He plays expressive iteration. And now he's uh, Dragon's Channel is a 3-3 flyer, so I think now we're also starting to get beat down. But maybe if we can draw a land next turn, we will be able to to bounce back. Um he puts your Ganta in hand. And, and now I think we must be able to draw a card land. Another Lord. So we just dismember that one. Uh, our fate is pretty much sealed here. We are so far behind. And now we can just hard cast Yuganza. So this is just a 5-5. Five, five, and, uh, and we don't even draw a land here. So it's pretty over. But if we draw just a blue land, we can bounce Yuganza back to hand. Give us some tempo swing. But we are on 6 here. So let's draw our land. No land. This is like a, <laughs> this is like all against all the odds. Not being able to draw lands uh, in was it like eight cards, uh, seven, six, seven cards in a row without drawing one land, 
And let's take it all the way. Let's get the last card. Let's see if we can draw here. And we offered. Okay, so one one. On the on the play, is does anything change on the play? I think on the play we rather want our either vials, even though we got them here, but it's just to be able to play faster down, and then brazen borrow uh, to bounce the the, the Ganta when he plays it, could be decent. Uh, one lander, um, okay, but you have an either vial. Uh, that can get pretty uh, up and running. I think this one is really aggressive to keep, but if we do keep it, we have a Nether Vial that can 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 get us out of many things here. Um, I think it could be a consideration to to keep it, even though it's a pretty tough one. Um, and we'll try to see if we can spike it again here. Um, this might be an aggressive keep, but uh, but I think that if we draw draw, draw just one land, we have a, a spreading seas. Uh, where we can draw another card, um, and we even have an either vial, so I think it makes sense to try to keep this, even though it's a bit aggressive. It's a bit of on the aggressive side. Let's see. Let's see how it goes. Oof! Not a good start. Come on, deck. But next turn we can uh, we can trickster or harping our, our lord and start chaining them. Thoughtseize. Yeah, let's get this Tide Shipper in. It's again it's a 2-2, because we don't want him to take the, the Tide Shipper at this moment. He takes out the lore. Yeah, that's fine. And a Fatal Push on the Tide Shipper. Okay, so... Pretty good play by him. But next turn we got... Uh, we got the Eater up on two, and if we draw a land, we can uh, Spreading Seas uh, one of his sources. Uh, Svelu, not the one we needed, but let's just get the uh, Dragon's Channel up in his hand. So this is looking decent. If we draw a land, we can Spreading Seas. If we don't draw a land, we can just play out Svelu and starting drawing cards from that. And I think now it's time that we we haven't drawn a land in, in uh, 10, 10, 12 draws or whatever. Uh, but you can see here the Colligans command again. So this was a contrarian we were doing after the game, drawing a Dismember here, so we can't really draw lands. and. Him having Colligan's command to take out all the vials. I think maybe because if we take in the relics, uh, the relics are decent because when he Colligan's command them, you can crack them and then still uh, get an, uh, another card. And then that's not too bad. I can even draw a lucky the dismember. So the Dragon's channel will now be pretty uh, dangerous for us as it'll get um, Delirium here. And we draw land. Whoa, we did it. Now it's kind of late to do it. Uh, of course, we need to. Uh, and what we do here is try to, instead of taking one of his lands out because we can't really take him off mana, we just change the mood of all into a blue source so we can trick the next turn. I think that's the correct play. And the trickster against Dragonless Channeler is really strong, so. Let's see if we got one more trick up our sleeve. He's three cards in hand, I think. He takes six radiation. Yeah, that's fine. So, next turn we can trickster. And he didn't find any Greek's Death Shadow or Death Shadows. So I think it's okay. But we might as well get the uh, Svelun down now. Oh, does he have the counter spell? Yeah. And this, and this turn, of course, I think when he has mana up, maybe the better play would have been just to trickster and, and block. But I think considering we were pretty far behind, getting a value engine up and running could be could be strong here. And next turn we can also if we draw land we can double double play. I think that's also one one reason why we want to do that here. We get an either vial. It's kind of late, but let's just get it down. Taking one point of damage isn't that bad. And Dragon Rage Channel. Considering it's having it pre combat, but I still think we need to we need to see if we can get it off the board. But he has six cards in hand, so he must have a removal spell at this point. Maybe he doesn't. Yeah, he does. And I think um, from just from this little testing, I think the correct sideboard strat against Twix is their shadow because of the Colligans command at the moment. I think we take out the either vials and we take in the relics. 
Um, yeah. Something like Kira would be great in this matchup. He finds Blood Crypt here. Okay, we got a Lord in. We can take three in the air, so we're dead to Lightning Bolt. And the Warlock Row is not looking hard. Do you have it? Engineer for two, that's also pretty good. So that means that Axel will take out, if you use it, it'll take out the Spreading Seas, uh, doing, uh, making uh, Mudavolt into a creature land again. We can get this up on two now, see what happens. Lord, okay. We need to find a trickster for the Dragonless Channeler, or something that can interact with the Dragonless Channeler, because it's lethal next turn. So I think we need to crack the Warlock Grove to see if we can get lucky, but we might as well attack first. We can also just do it in his turn, but it's not doing good. I think we need to take uh, take the chance and get the info. The Spring Seas could also be a play. So we just let's, let's Spring Seas the Warlock Grove instead. It'll give us a card anyways. Ooh, yeah, not what we needed. We needed to find the... We, we could only draw one card no matter what we did here. If we, if we cracked it first and found an island, or find a, found a, yeah, I think maybe he said we should have cracked it first because we found a land we could would be able to play, play it. Okay, so we're down in the first game. Okay, we are back, round two. This was a for, of course an unfortunate game loss due to some pretty bad uh, hands that didn't really pan out. But um, we're back. Let's see if we can do more testing here. Um, and we get a decent hand with a turn one Ether Vial into what could be a turn two uh, Adept or a Titan, depending on what you have. We're still excited about seeing if we can get some testing off the new cards here. And he plays Den of Buckbeer. Okay. Mm, this could mean different things, but he plays a Soul Scar Mage. So this is the, a pretty cool deck um, that Natural Rhythmic is playing. He's playing this um, one red uh, deck that uh, counts on prowess a lot. And uh, in that deck, they actually, um, they have a lot of uh, good ways of, of uh, taking off our creatures. So I think here, if we wanted to see if we can deny him a bit of mana and see if we can draw a third land source, I think it's good to start with playing the um, the, uh, the Spreading Seas on the Bugbearer. And he plays a Dragon Red Chandler into uh, attacking with Soul Scar Mage. But he's afraid here. He's afraid of us putting in the adept, which we could we could do. But let's instead of trying instead of you know cheating it in. So well played by him. We hope we could have ambushed it, but well played by him. And uh, here we just choose to to use it in our turn instead of putting it in. It's it's better uh, to to see if we can deny him mana. But he plays another mountain and he attacks in. So this is where we should start considering uh, using. The Harbinger to bounce. Um, of course, he could have a burn spell. Um, he can't really get anything big on the Dragon Channel, so he's probably gonna kill the one. Uh, yeah, and he uses Lava Dart. Oh, that's interesting because Lava Dart, yes, that'll give it two prowess triggers. So now we're gonna put in the Harbinger and bounce the Soul Star Mage. Um, and he needs to flash back the uh, Lava Dart to kill off the Tide Shiver. And then he won't be able to play his. Uh, yeah, he will be able to play his Soul Scrum Mage uh, again, but uh, but he'll he will lose some temper here. Now, of course, it was the one damage from the Lever Dart and then the one damage from Dragon Rage Channel, but we got the Dragon Rage Channel off the board, and he plays down the Soul Scrum Mage. We, play, we we get a Lord. That's pretty good. Let's just play the adept to see what we'll draw. A land is decent. Now we can actually double uh, double play. So we take out an island again. And now we can uh, play the lord just to have big creatures up. And it's also decent now when he's tapped out to go in on the attack with the harbinger. Putting some counter pressure on. The harbinger is some of the new tech uh, we want to test out to see if this is good in the mesa. And here they proved really nice. One of the great things about harbinger is that being able to do it at instant speed with the uh, either vial is just crazy. Crazy strong. He go with a uh, channeler and a, a bubble. Uh, reckless impulse. So you, they're really going deep 
and he actually gets uh, delirium here. Mr. Rhythmic, you have delirium, sir. And again, second, of course, now this uh, reeks of uh, a removal spell, so we don't really want to gamble here. He uses Levitard on the Lord. And then he can Sega Mountain to, to flash it back. Yeah, and then we take four damage, so that's pretty good. But we got the Harbinger now we can uh, use to... Uh, so we don't want to take it up here. Draw land, we need... It could be cool to draw something else. Let's just crack the Warlock Grove. Salty. Interesting, we can't really reuse it. Um, but it would be actually interesting to be able to use it in the same turn as the Harbinger. Um, we don't really have an attack here because uh, he has a 3-3. And we don't have any Lord, so let's just... Uh, Start by just passing here. And he used the lightning bolt in his main phase. I think it's on the tide chamber, yeah. Okay, that happens. Now the Dragon Race Chandler has uh, Delirium, so he's putting a good amount of pressure on now. But we do have the Harbinger in hand, and next turn we can also subtlety. And look here, he actually is tapped out of red mana, so the card we bounce won't be able to uh, be replayed this turn, which means that our subtlety will look really strong next turn. Okay, let's bounce this, get off, and then we take two damage. Coming down to 15. He has only two cards in hand, and we have a salty up now. And we need to stay it on two because of adept draw. And now we got the March of the Swirling Mist. So we get we get to test some cards finally. And I hope this is uh, a good service for you guys so we can test these cards out. Uh, and you can get some more information if, if you want to use them in this uh, in this mesa right now. Um, so he, he plays the Dragon Rush Channel, and now, of course, we play the Subtlety. Great value. Uh, he puts it on the bottom. Get it, get away. Uh, and now he can... Uh, unfortunately, he has a Lightning Bolt, and he can uh, kill it off and attack in with a double Soul Scar Mage. And we don't really have blocks here. Um, we could consider double blocking, uh, which would mean that he can only... He's, he's out of mana, so he might only be able to... Uh, kill off one so we're considering here should we double block or uh, one of them or should we just wait we do have the swirling mists but i think it's it's good just to to start trading off here uh, and we just uh, we might as well just at the block with everything he might have something like uh, something to 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 cast here but let's just block everything he can only kill off one of the creatures you know, only one card in hand so we should be able to have two cards after this But it's, it's, yeah, he does have a lever dart in his yard, so that's why that's why we need to triple block. So we get the prowess trigger now. He can kill off that one. Then he's a three four. Then he can only still kill one of the harbingers. So right, now he just lever darts us instead, which makes sense. It's just one more. And we draw the Otovara, also decent. Uh, Otovara can also of course bounce the soul scrimmage, and he's down to two lanes. Um, but we are out of creatures here. And he plays the monitor switch for you. Uh, good play, good aggressive play now, and he can, uh, but he, he he's afraid of what we're doing here. So he just passes the turn. And we just uh, go uh, go to draw step. Isavile, not that hard. Actually kind of interesting now. We can't really attack either. So let's just pass here. Uh, Reckless Impulse is good. Uh, it gets him, um, Two cards he can play, but it's Crash Through and Soul Scar Mage. Okay, Crash Through. Yeah, so that's pretty good. Uh, and now he has two, th two threes coming in. So this is where we just bounce the Soul Scar Mage. The good thing about this play is he didn't hit a land, so he can't uh, replay the Soul Scar Mage this turn. And I much rather want him to have that stock in hand than the Monster's Whisperer that he can play next turn. And great draw. Now we can copy the Harbinger and uh, bounce the, uh, the Haster to hand and then hit at attacking for two. So now of course he can he can play uh Manamorph was a good play because now he can both both play both the creatures or he can even play one of them and a and a uh, and now he plays two soul scar mage. So he drew one soul scar mage and he lost this all the crash through. So okay. Let's see what we draw here. 
Now we got two either vial, so we can get one of them up on one, and one stays on two still, if we draw either vial. Um, or if we draw. But we get decent attacks here. Two, 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 two's coming in. He goes down to, uh, to, to seven because of the Lord. And now we can uh, use our march as a, as a temple play, uh, because he'll probably put in the Swift Spear, go for attacks. Now he crashed through. Let's let him just go all in, and then we can face them out. And facing is really uh, interesting uh, ability. It works that they don't get removed from game, but it count as they they are not there, so they can't. They they uh, they are not gonna attack us. And he goes to being in combat, and he can attack in. And he actually only attacks in with one. It's interesting, but I think still we need to use March now. Well, let's see. Let's see what we do here. But it works that then in our turn they are not there. They're simply uh, phased out. <laughs> so in our turn, uh, we can hit back for, for lethal and he's tapped out now. So we can just uh, select them. And it actually works rather in, non-intuitively non when you work, use this card. So beware of that. Then you need to ch click cast because you choose not to exile any cards. You can Normally you can decrease the cost of the card by discarding blue spells. Um, but you, so you, you need to first choose this, uh, the amount of uh, freezes you want to use it on, and then you you uh, click cast right after. It's a bit weird, uh, but this is decent. We we get to um, we get we just get to uh, get the sense of still had all of these with the added play into a lethal attack. So then the match was uh, was decent, um, and I think in this matchup it could be in general pretty good. Um, because it's it's a it's a race and a, it's a big swing in the race that you can just face out three creatures. Notice that they got grayed out of it. It was pretty weird. So they got they got sent on a, a lonely march somewhere. Okay, uh, relics. Um, uh, yeah, they, of course they have uh, lever darts. They have um, train race channeler. So relics could be a consideration. I do like Brazen Boros because they like they go all in on the uh, prowess triggers, getting you know the soul scar mage all the way up uh, to being a big one. And in that situation, I think bouncing it could be good. Um, and I think relics is also worth it because of the lava darts. Uh, Solitis, uh, I don't know. I don't think they're playing Fury out of the sideboard. And I think the creatures they're playing, uh, maybe it's too um, yeah, they're too small for Mystic instance. And Trainsies is not good because. They, you're not gonna uh, choke them on mana. This members is good because we need just to take off the soul scar mage at the, the right time. Okay, okay. Testing out March of the Swirling Mist was fun there. I think it's a pretty uh, interesting card. It, it has some utility and you can play it sometimes. You can play it for one mana if you discard blue spells. Uh, and then for each two targets, you discard one blue spell. So let's say you use two mana, one blue and one, and then you discard one blue. And it's two mana to face out three creatures. That's pretty strong. Okay, this hand. Ooh, this is slow, a slow burner. Slow hand. Well, we do have a dismember, which for his early play, uh, but I think maybe it's too slow. We mulligan it. Uh, okay, this is much worse. Um, of course, we do have the mimic and the either vial. So, but on the draw, it's pretty slow. We keep it anyways. Let's hope to not get in the same situation as last time. We can play the M Mimic as a land in turn one. You do have the Dragon Ridge Channeler. No land. It's happening again. <laughs> I think our the first hand was just too non... Uh, non um, that was having too little in the first hand, so I think that was... Correct to, to mulligan it. And let's get the Edervile down. He levered yards just in the just at us to get some surveil value. And again, aggressive here. Aggressive. He's going really aggressive. So we're already down to 15, but if we draw land, we can uh, use Harbinger and bounce. This members are looking bad though because he's hitting us down for four now as well. That's the problem with this members against these acro decks. Like, I think against burn, I think you don't want to use it, but in this against this specific deck that's more creature dependent. Finally, we drew a land. Uh, okay, so we can either harbinger, um, we can harbinger the dragon's channel. That's pretty good, but then we can't dismember anything. 
and the dismembers. There's an alternative play just to dismember both because if we do that, uh, the monster switch will just come in. But I think it's still the right play. Um, and now we're gonna take some damage from Monster Swift Spear. So he replaces his uh, general and a bobble. That's really good. I like the interaction with Mistress Bobble and uh, Swift Spear. Mister Natural Rhythmic, you're doing it, sir. And he goes in with a two three. And I think we need to trade here because it'll, it'll get out of hand too fast if we don't uh, start uh, stemming the bleeding. He has only one card in hand, and it would be nice to draw a trickster. So now we're considering should we just use both his members? Then that'll mean that we go down to three. That's dangerous when they have lightning bolts. Let's start by playing the adder to see what we draw. Moon vault. Okay, nice. So we have a land here. The trickster is great, and I think the right play is to be able to trickster the dragonist channeler when it comes in. So we pass here, and. Uh, and he, what does he do here? One red mana, lever darts out. Yeah, that's uh, that's really good. That's really good. But we knew he had the lever dart. So he sacks a mountain to do that. And that at the stage is also really good. Now his swift spear is a big one. But now we need to dismember it in response. And hopefully he doesn't have more ways to get it up there. And... Uh, so we dismember it on the front on the line because we need to do it there because otherwise he'll be able to uh, resolve that and maybe he has uh, Manamorphos, exactly Manamorphos. He can't really play that anyways, but yeah, he could actually. So in this situation, if he had the labor dart or the Manamorphos, he could be able to save his Swift Spear. So we need to kill it right there. Um, labor dart is annoying uh, because now we're considering if we trickster uh, and tap down the Dragon's channel, he'll be able to labor dart you can play Manamorphos and Lever Dart double uh, two times to kill it off, and then we take one damage. So I actually think for this turn it's better just to tap it down pre-combat. Um, normally it's a great ambush to do, but the problem is that we're going to take one point of damage as he can just kill us, uh, kill the tricks with Lever Dart. So we won't be able to kill the Dragon Channel no matter what we do. Um, and that one, one point of damage might matter, as we need to maybe dismember. Um, so here we're considering uh, are we taking it, taking it up. Uh, to play Svelu, or are we uh, staying around two? We take it up to play Svelu. I think that's fine. We draw another Svelu, and we are of course in a in a bitter situation here because we need to we need to need now dismember. So now we need to put as much pressure as we can as possible. So let's just get all our lords down, and then we need to dismember dismember the Dragon Rage channeler. And <laughs> so so fun being at being at three exactly three when you are up against. Uh, uh, a, a guy with bolts, but um, if if we had taken that one damage, then a lever dart would also be lethal. So I think, and he has a lever dart in, in the, the yard and one in the exile zone. So actually, we are pretty pretty dead here. But he doesn't know that. So hopefully, he uses the lever dart on something. Our only hope is that he maybe kill off some master or something with lever dart. So we are pretty 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 screwed. It's not good. And now we kill off the Dragon Return so it doesn't get any value. But you can see here now he can Lever Dart us. And he can Lever Dart us. The only hope we had is that he didn't see that line. But of course he, he, he can see the line. He is a burn deck. And he can burn us. So this is not good. You saw it, bro. Nice Lever Darting. I don't think... Um, I don't know if we could have played this differently this game. I think we were just uh, stall a mana early. Is there anything we want to change for the sideboard? Uh, difficult to say. I think it looks decent. Okay, let's take this hand. Um, this one is a good one. Now we have this early early interaction with this member. We have a tide shaper. I like that hand. And we don't. I don't. Uh, we don't want to play down the tide shaper yet. And instead of playing the Otavara, I think it's cooler just to play the Manamo. If we draw a lot of lands, Otavara could be cool later on. Dragon Rage General, let's just get you, sir. I'm not a member of this crew anymore, you're dismembered. Um, but notice here, actually, it's been a really tight game and long game. We can take him off mountain, that's cool. And we actually suddenly um, are running out of time. 
um, uh, pretty pretty crazy. It's been some really intense matches and a lot of different decisions. And normally I don't, I never run out of time uh, when playing. Um, only, only like when you're playing, you know, vintage cube or, or something like that. Um, so so we need to play a bit fast. Let's get the Svelun down. But but four minutes and thirteen seconds. We need to uh, we need to to step up the game here uh, and play play pretty uh, pretty fast. So uh, he uh, he got two creatures here coming in, and uh, we don't want to block here because. He, it's uh, definite that he has uh, removal um, or burn spells to to take us out here, so we are both under pressure from him. We are nine. We are under pressure um, to to get everything up and running. Three minutes and fifty seconds. This is tight. Uh, let's get the draw in. Okay, Svelun, uh, pretty good draw. Uh, Relic can be used against eleven arts. Maybe not that interesting right now. What do we do here? Uh, I think it's correct to get down the either vial and then we can uh, just bounce with Odavara. To stem the bleeding a bit, we need to be able to push in damage, so we can kill him fast. <laughs> it, sometimes you know you need to play on the clock, right? So he he goes in, he doesn't uh, do anything, and he passes the turn. So we wanted to make him use prowess triggers uh, and then bounce. So now we just bounce in step instead. So we can replay. It. That's that's pretty good. Uh, what do we draw? Draw here another Otovara. Yeah. So let's just get the relic down. Getting to exile, we we got we got another bounce effect in us, and he can lay it at us. Um, in response, two minutes fifty seconds. I'm getting stressed out just from watching the replay here. <laughs> As Velum goes in, okay. Um, so we still got the Otovara bounce. Two minutes thirty-eight. He plays the Dragon Race Channeler. He has four cards in hand. This is a lot, and he comes in here. I need just to to stem the bleeding, um, but next turn we can either violin the master and attack with Buddha Vault. That's pretty strong, but he has two creatures here. So let's see what we draw. Dismember, scary, scary cards to have. Um, I think we just attack in with Svelun to see what we draw. Okay, a land is not good. Hmm. Uh, okay, so let's just play down the either vial. We need to we need to dismember something here, but we we have the Minamo to be able to untap uh, Svelun, so that that could be our winning play. And he uh, goes in here. We can trick Strain Master. We can activate Mudavolt. This is a power play, uh, and we can uh, untap uh, Svelun with Minamo. He lightning bolts now. He doesn't have the money man, uh, money uh, mana for the war, so he 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 does uh, make a big play here. Play mistake here. So 135, what's happening? Are we trying? Are we actually getting some something back in this? We can win on the swim back. Um, we uh, we actually forgot to untap with Minamo, but it doesn't really matter. We got the lethal swing back here. So uh, one minute, 30 seconds. Yeah, uh, we are. Um, we took. Let's just attack him with two. Creatures here. Then we, we can attack. Uh, we can untap with Minamo. Now we also have a Muda Vault on the swing back, and, and, uh, and so we can eat up the the monster. And we on four. That's pretty decent. Uh, pretty pretty crazy fast. So I didn't uh, get to untap. But now we on forty one seconds. Uh, he he just passes. So um, it looks like we're actually some, somewhat doing it here. Uh, and three HP. We need to just push in damage. So let's activate both our Muda Vaults. He's on three. We have a lot of lethal creatures, so let's just attack in. 21 seconds. Uh, do we have anything? I think we got this, maybe. He plucks in, but that's also that's still lethal. And he plays Kosselix Return, which is insane. This means that he deals two damage to each creature. And that also is uh, because the master then dies, it kills off all the Muda Vaults. Oh, what, a, what a crazy game. Um, and of course, we were out of time. We won't be able to to uh, come back from it. I think we even had a chance afterwards, uh, but we were out of time. Unfortunate chain of events. But <laughs> you need to be, uh, pay attention to the play clock. I was just, just, you know, we were using a lot of time uh, considering all the, the different plays in this matchup and 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 counting their cards in the graveyard and and finding out the new cards like Harpinger and especially March, which can be tricky to to figure out. Um, so that's how it is. Let's get into round three. Round three. Artem go, so we owe we owe zero testing the new cards. Not not a good thing, but uh, let's see if we can bounce back here. He uh, cycles uh, Street Wrath times two, and he plays down a Blood Crypt and a Ragavan and a Bubble. Ragavan is back. 
Um, and now we draw the either vial. So this is the consideration again, and I think this is an interesting one. Um, are we getting hit by the Ragman to be able to play the either vial, letting it hit us? Or do we need to play down the blocker in Tide Chipper? I think in this situation, the Tide Chipper would just easily be just be, you know, uh, killed off by by removal spell. Uh, so I think we need to get down the vial. And I think typically it's correct to get the vial down. Otherwise, the Ragman just makes the vial sit in hand. And the violence is a great play. So it's uh, it looks like it's uh, Grixis, it is Grixis Death Shadow since they have Street Wraith and now we have uh, Thought Seize. Are you taking our March? March with the Swirling Mist maybe? Take our March. What is he taking? Oh, I think he got the he got the master of the portrait, and then he plays his death shadow. It's a five-five. Oh god. Um. Okay. Edit. Yeah. Edit is uh, maybe decent. Uh, we can also charge here in a two-two, so that means we will have two blockers. Show him this failure. He know our hand anyway, so land is fine. Maybe the march is good against death shadow to do a tempo play. He attacks in with both. We can, we can put in. I think we need to put in the the tide shipper, uh, but it doesn't really matter what we block with. So let's just block the added on the ragavan. Please, Kruxa. Oh, Kruxa, that's a good card. Um, and we're just going to discard March. I don't think it's going to be relevant here. And we need the creatures. Next turn we can both Svelun and, and the Lord, so that's that's not bad. And he's on 6 HP, so he's also burning his lights here in both uh, ends here. Um, so we play down Svelun. And he used Drown the Luck. Oh, that's... Uh, that's unfortunate. So now we really can't attack because he might have, if he has um, like anything, uh, we will be able to. Uh, we need to be able to block the death shadow now. He could have dressed down, for example, then it's a lethal creature. Ah, he thought seizes us again, going down to four. Only one card in hand. Um, so I think that maybe now it's time that we... Uh, he can't really attack us either, we have a lethal here, but... So the gameplay is here, do we do we take the damage, hope he doesn't have a dress down? Or team more battle rage, or do we jump block? Jump blocking is like... Uh, that doesn't work against team more battle rage, because that'll also give him the uh, double strike. But we need both our creatures to be lethal if he has a blocker, so... I think in this situation, I think it's better to uh, to take the damage and hope that he doesn't have... But he can also just have a Lightning Bolt, so... If he has a Lightning Bolt... Um, that would be bad for us, because then we die if we don't block, and if we block, he'll just kill us a lot and we don't, won't have lethal. So we're dead to a Lightning Bolt in, no, no matter what we do. So I think we should take it and hopefully say, you don't have a Lightning Bolt. And he, we, he didn't, so he let us win it. Side game. Well, one of the th funny thing about our matchup against Grixis Death Shadow, and I've been thinking about this a lot, is that since they're burning themselves so much, and our one of our primary features that we can actually win it, take in, go in for damage, uh, you know, like doing like a loads amount of damage um, as a surprise attack, is that we actually sometimes just could be able to just blow them out really fast. So, okay, um, I, we need uh, dismembers against them. Um, because of the Ragavan. Solentees are good against Kruxa, but I don't think they're good against uh, Greek, uh, the Death Shadow. Um, Basin Borrow is good for the tempo play. Considering Flusterstorm, March, which cards 
I'm considering it. I also think Spring Seas is still fine because they have a great, uh, greedy mana base. Okay, we have the Salty on hand actually. So let's see what goes on here. Um, this is a, a classical Lord hand and uh, this could work if we can chain the Lords together. He goes in for the Ragavan play. And this hand is so bad against Ragavan, but we do have the Salty. And uh, this has actually been a discussion point uh, a lot. Is it worth giving them a 2 for 1 on the 1 drop? But just this one drop in particular is just a special kind of one drop, right? And he puts it on the bottom. So, I know this is aggressive, but... Um, that Ragaman would have run away with the game. And him finding, like, uh, a Svealoon, uh, imagine he found that one on top. You know, they have natural island, so he can play a turn 2 Svealoon if he were lucky. That, that, that we can't let happen. And he has another Ragavan. Tide Shaper, okay. Tide Shaper. So we can either uh, just play Lord and say let's block, or we can play the Tide Shaper. Tide Shaper getting him off uh, maybe black mana could be pretty good. Because then he can't fail push it. So he needs to have a bolt. And then he'll get the Ragavan value, but that's how we have to, have to do. He just attacks in. We'll just block. Now he's two Ragamans down. We got two monkeys out of the game. Ah, Kroxa. Kroxa, not not bad. Uh, I think the right place to discard, maybe, I think it's the... Um, yeah, if you play Moodavolt, then, then you can play Lord, Lord. But discarding a Lord is also fine. Then we can play Moodavolt and have a Lord next turn. So I think it's, it's better to, to be able to have a mana also that allows us to have a lot of a lot of the cards we draw and then more live. So we discard one of the lords. Draw this member. He has three cards in hand. Ah, let's see that this member may do some work here. If play a shadow, it's a little a little bit a little little itsy bit of little shadow. Ah he finds a mountain. Then it, it doesn't seem like he has the shadow. Holigan's command. That's a good play. Um, and we can't do anything about it. That's a 2 for 1. Spring Seas is decent. Uh, we can take him off black mana. And we, of course we tap the cavern. If we draw a land we can attack with Moodavolt. We didn't draw a land but we did draw a Brazen Borrow. We can't play that unfortunately. But we can play the uh, Petty Theft. Artem Go goes for the expressive iteration. You can express your iteration all you want, sir. Let's do that. And another expressive iteration. This time he won't be able to play the land though, so that one just goes to the to the um, yeah. That's gonna get, just gets exiled. Okay, trickster is fine. Um, I don't think there's any need to attack with Moodle here. We want, rather want to get a permanent uh, down. Okay, Dragon is channel from the top. And Death Shadow. And it passes. Okay, so I think that in this situation it's better to, to bounce with uh, Petty Theft on the, brazen, the Death Shadow. So it can attack next turn. And then uh, we can uh, use Trickster on the Dragon is channeler. Doing the blowout. Moodavolt is interesting because since we are playing down the Trickster, we might as well just attack with Moodavolt. Get in there. The, 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 that that's of course um, the predicated on him, him, you know, not counting for Trickster. But it doesn't really matter if you know that if you have Trickster or not. And if we attack with Budavolt, we need to use Trickster and um, 
Yeah. So that's that's in the aggressive line. Um, then we need to trick to make it into a one one. And let's see if he it, this one works. This is this is um, this is an aggressive play. It it did work. Um, and notice he was off black mana at the point, so he fatal push couldn't kill off the trickster. Um, and now he finds the death shadow. I place death shadow, but it's not that dangerous. The death shadow. It doesn't. It just means that right now we can't attack. But uh, the warlock grove is decent as we can use it to play the brazen burrow in his on eight. So it's not that bad. I think Brazen Brawl is a nice value card. And I don't think it's bad in this meta game right now. I, I do think you can consider main, ding it, main deck uh, for Brazen Brawl. There's a lot of grindy matchups. But he did have the Unholy Heat. Okay, Glass Pool Mimic. So we want to play that to tap down Trickster. Oh, bad God. Here I accidentally, I remember this, I accidentally uh, played it as a land instead. This is rough because you can't undo after you play the land. There's just a, me f having a fat finger, so I just clicked, I accidentally played down the land instead. Um, Not that good here, but he's still on eight uh, so let's use the mana now we need to just do what we can here so we find a land it's not good that was pretty rough because the idea was to tap down the death shadow uh being able to attack in with uh, muda vault and trickster and now we can use drown the lock it's not good Let's see what he does. Does he tap four mana? Is this a Croxter from the yard? Yeah, that's rough. But notice that uh, he did have the drown the lock, so he could have countered the um, the glass pool mimic if he played it. So it wouldn't really have mattered, but it was an annoying. And they're really close together, so if you're too fast, sometimes you can you can click on the wrong one. Okay, March is uh, still th I think it could be decent here. We want to test it out against uh, the Death Shadow guys. So one one against Artem. We're going to play. A, we get to play a lot of magic cards here. Is, uh, he is thinking. But it, it would be cool uh, to see what people think of March of the Swirling Mist as, a, as an option. I noticed the guy that I took inspiration from uh, that uh, played it in an event. He used three in the main deck. I'm just testing out two here to find out if uh, it has some utility. Okay, so this hand, the problem, uh, it, it, all in all, this looks pretty good. You have interaction, you have... Uh, you know the, the mana you need um, and you have an adept but the problem is that the adept doesn't have a body in another merfolk so we might not be able to play that on two but i still think it's 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 the correct keep and we might want to use a tavara as a spell so i think it's fine just to get the mimic out as a, a short this time it was on purpose <laughs> okay blood crypt into ragavan yeah and ragavan we don't want to allow that um we did draw the sphere loon so uh, Adept is fine. Um, of course, we ne we didn't want to solitude this adept because here it's better just to brazen borrow or bounce if if we didn't draw the uh, land for the adept. So let's just play down the adept. We draw a card, and maybe he hit us 
Uh, maybe he doesn't, but I think it's fine to do it. Um, so let's see if he got the removal spell. Seven cards. Maybe they do. Oh! Oh, snap! They did have the removal spell. I think that's so stacked with removal. Uh, oh, the Lord of Atlantis. Yeah. If he plays down the island, he can play this, but uh, it's always funny with the Lords. You know, do he, do he, does he want to do that with the Lord of Atlantis? Because it gives all my Merfolk, all our Merfolk, is getting plus one, plus one as well. So he chooses to, to not do it and then Thoughtseize instead. He takes Sphereloon, which is interesting. We draw another Sphereloon. So since he took the Sphereloon, does it mean that he doesn't have any answers for Sphereloon? Should we play down hit here? Maybe. I think maybe that could be correct, because uh, why would he take Sphereloon instead of something like Trickster? If he's if he does, does have a, uh, the you know Fatal Push or something against Sphereloon. So this is just a great way of getting you to utilize our mana. And he attacks in with Ragavan. Um, and I think blocking is fine. If he does have the removal spell, then uh, it's a 2 for 1. And uh, I know uh, people can say, oh, you need two Sphereloons to stay alive. But I actually think sometimes it's like he didn't have the perfect solution with the Fatal Push. And he has, if he has a follow-up burn spell here, we are getting a 2, two for 1. And in the value in exchange, these matchups, I think it's fine to take it. I don't think he considered us blocking, actually. Because he goes into the tank now. We need to find a way to kill it off now. Mm, maybe he has Cuddle Guns Command, then it's still decent. Oh, Collective Brutality. Yeah, that's fine. So it's a 2 for 1 for us. And he uses the entire turn on this as well, so... I'm not complaining here. Uh, Kevin is interesting. This means that we can keep the Autovara in hand and we can play Kevin saying uh, Merfolk and then we just pass. So we have Salty up. He know we have Salty. But we also have Brazen Borrow and Trickster. So we're looking decent here. I think this is pretty good. After a couple of bad starting matches, I think uh, we could be looking to uh, come back here. And in the end step, uh, let's just get the Brazen Borrow down for to beat him down. He's only two cards. And this is just a great 3-1 flyer, right? Now draw the edit, that's great. But let's start by attacking in. Ooh, nothing. That's great. Okay, so he know we have the subtlety. Um, so let's just let's just start, start boarding out. And use stress down. And this is interesting, because he uses stress down, which means that our edit won't draw a card, but it also means that we have a chance here to do something with the subtlety. This is a consideration, because if we evoke subtlety, it'll go into play as a 3-3. Three, three. I think that's, that's actually pretty good, uh, having a 3-3 three, three flyer. It's, it's in one card, and then, then we have so much... Uh, uh, a flyer is really good in this matchup. So this is where we actually just say, let's get let's get a 3-3 three, three flyer. And then we have a 6 power flying in the air. This might be crazy, but uh, but I do believe that uh, they don't have that much against flying. Assault can be a big problem for them. They do have the Dragon Race channel though, but we have the Autovara to bounce it. And also needs to attack next turn. Oh, yeah, dismember code also work. So let's just dismem dismember that one. Drown the luck? No. We could also attack in with Moodle now. This is 10 damage. So this is look looking rough for him. These two cards, they need to be really good. Otherwise, we got this game. It's funny to play against uh, Death Shadow right now. It's not our worst matchup. I think uh, Yund is uh, worse. Jund is worse. Oh, Colgan's Command.
so he's on five. We got seven power. He's searching. He's searching for a solution. And I think actually in this situation, it needs to be something like, I you know, if you can find a lightning bolt for the subtlety, he will stay alive for one more turn. And we also can just draw, draw a lord randomly. And uh, we just check here, we have seven lords in the deck still. And he plays a dragon as a blocker. And an 8-8 eight, eight Death Shadow, so that's pretty good. Okay, um, and we draw March, that's pretty funny. Uh, it's not a Lord, but it uh, will allow us to uh, march uh, his uh, two creatures here. So we can attack in for lethal. He has one red mana, so he might be able to kill off the Adept. Um, which means that maybe we sh it's better to do it now, if he has the removal spell. Consideration is just doing it in his upkeep instead. And then we can hit him in for three in the air with salty. I think that's actually better because let's say he have the lightning bolt, then he'll just kill the, the salty when we attack with that alone. And then we can in our turn march and then we have four power uh, and we draw a, a lord, we'd be able to to um, to do something here, but pretty rough spot here. Um, the march was, uh, was decent because it's a good tempo swing here actually. Uh, so, we, so let's just attack with the subtle to see if he has the removal. No bolt or no uh, unholy heat or anything. No, he goes to two. And now we can just pass and then twirling missed him. So it's in his next, before his next upkeep. We need to be aware of this. So uh, do we do an upkeep? Yeah, let's do an upkeep. So now we just, um, we need to tap. Uh, choose both these creatures. You notice here, you click OK, and then you know, need to say, I'll cast it. I'll not use any uh, tricks to that. And then these two guys, you are faced out. You're grayed out. You're all gray. That's all fine. So, two cards in hand, four minutes. These, these guys are, are gone for an entire round. We have three, three lethal creatures he needs to handle with two cards. I don't know how that is possible. And he can dash in with the Ragavan with zero cards in hand. So here, actually, I think the correct play is just to uh, let it hit us. What can he draw that makes any sense? He finds a land, whatever. And we got him. Look at these guys, all faced out of here. So we got back by beating up, um, beating, beating up, up the Death Shadow deck. I think uh, I've been I've been liking the matchups against uh, those guys. Um, it can be it can be rough facing up against a big uh, death shadow, but we have like tricksters to tap them down. And if we you know use um, hopping could also be pretty good in a tempo tempo game based game. Okay, this hand and that's too many subtleties. This is much better. Let's just pick uh, take one vial out. And another thing I want to mention that I got a lot of flack from uh, Mystical Potato for my uh, choosing of uh, islands. So notice here that I, I actually went in and um, and and have now uh, new islands. I have uh, all uh, identical islands, all from Mirage, because I did a great face palm last turn, last uh, <laughs> uh, two games ago. Running out of time. I think it's great to have a palm in the island. So I think that's good. 
Uh, okay, but he plays down. Uh, this is interesting. Otherworldly uh, gaze and uh, silver smoke ghoul, meaning that this is uh, dredge and dredge is going off, and our hand is oh, totally non-interactive. So this deck is is uh, pretty crazy as it can. Uh, and you can see this. They really go off here. They they are able to to replay. They they put a lot of cards in their uh, graveyard, and then they can from the quadrilax over the uh, otherworldly gaze, and then they can get them back in. Um, going off with the combo, so we just need to, f you know, board out. Hopefully, they don't have the combo. It... The city of brass. I like city of brass. Nakomoeba. You can see we can really block this because it just com it comes back. The silver smoke ghoul. You can get those three life really easy from cards like uh, thrilling uh, discovery and and all sorts of other looting effects. There's the thrilling discovery. So you discard two cards and you draw three cards and you gain two life. As here, and then he gets his prized amalgam into the yard. Yeah, and that's just, you know, he's just going off here because perhaps the amalgam lets him, if he gets a creature from the yard into play, it all, he also get his uh, prize amalgam from, from his graveyard into play tapped. So, because he got the Nakomobia in, he can get a, a Amalgam in as well. So now he has so many creatures already in play. Because he can dredge, he can dredge the Nakomobia into his yard and then it goes to play and then it, the Amalgam also goes into play. So when he dredge and the Nakomoeba and the Prize Amalgam both gets, they get in the, the yard. Let's see, now Nick and I just attack in for a million creatures here. And we don't really have that many good blocks. We just put in a lord and need to trade off a lot of things here. This one, this this way we still stay alive, but it's not looking hot. Because he he get he gets the life back and then he just gets three ghouls in because he got the life. So, okay, against uh, this combo deck. Uh, Relics is of course great because of they're using the graveyard a lot and force of negation um, to count to counter the uh, I think it's important to counter counter something like a, a, a important um, discard spell from the yard. Plus, some is also decent just to to again counter counter the combo combo cards. If they can't get the the graveyard filled, uh, they can't start dredging. So the initial cards that like otherworldly gaze. That they use it's pretty co cool to force of negation them because it'll also mean that they will be uh, exiled so he can't use it from the yard with flashback and now we have the fluster storm so we, we can see uh, we can try to see what's going on here but it's not a that good a hand so we, we, we choose to mulligan it this one is better because we do have both relics and of course um, playing against uh, dredge is uh, kind of crazy because it's not it doesn't really matter what you're how you how you're boarding out you need to stall them because they'll they'll do it faster um james and mine uh, is uh important land for them so it might be relevant to to uh, take it off the tide shaver but i think it's actually better to be ready to crack the yard with the relic you can't really tap out with a relic because maybe he just fills up his yard and we need to be able to just to use relic at the right moment Now it puts down another gemstone mine. Okay, and again, this situation, uh, we also want to hold up Frost Storm for the for, for the combo pieces. Uh, so even though the the it would be nice to be able to play the tide shaper with a mana up for a Frost Storm and for a relic, we can't do it since we don't have more than one blue mana. So th we we're just waiting. We're just waiting here. It's it's always like a weird it's a weird game against Stretch, right? Because it, it becomes an entirely different uh, matchup. 
where it's not about tempo anymore. It's about making sure that they, they don't go off. Because at some point, they, if they go off, we can't do anything about it. We need to be aware of this. So we're looking good. We have the relic. They can't really start doing anything crazy like that. And at some point, we'll just get a bit of pressure in. But notice he discard for hand size and he get the Nako Mueva in the yard. Luckily, we can just relic it. And now we have Force Negation as well. The Force Negation is interesting because now we might be able to start doing something. But I think it's still better to wait. It doesn't change that much because he might do it in our turn. Mana Confluence. Interesting to see Fluster Storm. I, I really like the card. It's a pretty cool design. Um, so let's see. Uh, let's see how it goes with uh, with Frosted Storm. Uh, and he starts going off now. Okay, so he pl he'll play the. No, actually, he just plays Nako Moeba. So he plays a one-one flyer. Yeah. That's absolutely fine. Trickster. So we need to draw an island so we can start playing some creatures. But I think still, we need to just wait. And he plays another Nako Mueva. So now, now he's, he's only placed uh, uh, two 1-1 one, one flyers. So that is that is something. And play a Lord. I think it, now we need to maybe consider doing, doing something. But again... We're not really getting beaten down hard from two one one flyers, so. And now he plays all the world gate. So now we need to act here. Um, I think this one we need to get out of the way. Um, no, actually we can just relic in the response. So, but now the dark blast comes in. So that's one of the cards we need to be aware of because that has dredge. So let's uh, start uh, exiling uh, exiling cards from the yard. And he can flash back that one. That's fine. Now he priced Al Amalgam comes comes in. We, we can crack it in response when when the trigger goes on the stack. So we're pretty good here. That's why it's so important that we we have these relics up and running. Now he see he still got the Al Amalgam in his yard. We drew a tight shaver. So now we now we start. Uh, saying let's let's get something on the board. We have double force negation up, and we 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 have the relics are still doing work here. So now we take off the uh, gemstone mine and get a tight shipping. We need to start, um, you know, building our board a bit. The two dudes, the two flying. What look like it's like um, jellyfish. <laughs> it's coming in, and he can use Asian Grudge on our. This is, this is a great card because it has flashbacks, so he'll be able to use it on both our relics. That's why the Force Negation is insane here, because it not only does it take him uh, off the uh, the Ancient Grudge uh, kill on the relic, it also means that he will have... Um, he won't have be able to flash it back, because it get, it get, if a Force Negation does the Exile, so... Nice Force here, and uh, we can take him off on another mana. And it's fine that he has his mana confluence and the City of Brass, Th those, those things... It really takes up for him now. He's on 11. Taking a lot of damage from that. And he plays Prismatic Ending on Relic. We can't do anything about this. Um, we can counter it. We can force it, actually. So I think that's pretty good. Let's just do that. The Relics are just, you know, game winners against him. And we're just going to go all in on protecting it. Yeah, not much we can do differently here. This is just about all our removals, uh, all our counter spells. I don't, I don't like uh, spreading seeds either because they'll, they'll have, they'll have access to the mana they need. Okay, we do have the relic again. So, good. again, a good hand. He just played the city of brass. We got a Fluster Storm. Okay, so the consideration is of course Relic versus Vile. And we can also just hold up Fluster Storm. And I think that's maybe better. So we're sure that he can't uh, you know, go off with, with anything here. And he plays the Thrilling. 
Discovery. And that's actually a really good Fluster Storm target because that's one of the big key pieces. And uh, Fluster Storm is just here a great negate. Or like a spell pierce. And in our turn, we can now, because we have no stress here, we can now play a Relic to start uh, maintaining his graveyard and then holding up Fluster Storm, or we can play both Vile and Relic. But I think it's better. We need to get the Relic down, that's just really great. And then with another Frost Storm in hand, it could be the consideration. The, again, the vial we, the vial is fine, and we don't. There's no need to take it out either because it it gives us some fast plays sometime. But we're not in a rush here, so let's just hold up Frost Storm again. Now the relic can start doing work. This these games are a patient. The game of of patient man. We need to be patient. The relic is just holding him in total in chess. Yeah, he can't. He can't do anything. He is. He has health back. Now use the integral. That's pretty unfortunate, because we can flash the storm it, but then he can flash it back. Um. And now, because of the relic, means that he can suddenly come online. So I still think it's better to just to crack it to get our value. To the warlock row. We do have a counter spell still, or the flash storm. And he did, did an hour upkeep. Um, so now we are... That was, that was really, really good for him. And I think the Soaring City could be relevant at some point, bouncing some something. So let's just hold up uh, Lost Storm at this moment. Now he plays other Wooly Gaze. Um, and this situation, we can't really counter it because he'll be able to pay the mana for it anyways. It's only like two mana. So we need to let that happen. This is not good. Now he got Dark Blast, which means the next turn he can start using Dredge. So we are under pressure here. And we play out this Valoon still holding up uh, Flosser Storm. And Svelun is, is pretty pretty good against him because many of his creatures is like 3-3s three and stuff like that. And they don't have any removal spell in these, these decks. So, he used Flashback here. This one we can counter. So let's do that. We, we need him to have the least amount of value from this. This is where it's relevant that it's only one blue mana because a counter spell here would be really bad as we won't be able to board out. This stalled him for another turn, and he can he forgot to Dark Blast, or he didn't Dark Blast the Dredge, so that's pretty good for us. I think, I don't know why he didn't do that. That gives us a chance. Um, no more counter spells. Uh, and in this situation, I think we need to start putting as much pressure on as we can, so put down the Master, activate the Mood Alt, and then we can hit him for exactly 7, going down to 9, which means that he's uh, he, we are lethal next turn, so he needs to do something pretty crazy here. Ah, another Lord is perfect. Now we indeed are lethal. So in this situation, I think we need just to play the Otavara as well. Maybe that's something we need to bounce. So the consider the, here's the Otavara or not. I think maybe something prob troublesome could be good to be able to bounce with Otavara. So okay, but he gets he gets a free round just to go off. What can he do? You can see they do a lot of stuff. <laughs> but that's tapped. But it gets goes up to seventeen. Um, okay, tide shaper is interesting because uh, this means that we can go uh, to be unblockable. Um, so what could we do here? I think uh, seventeen damage, seventeen life. Um, He's gonna get one more turn. We are 12. It's a bit scary. We need to play this tight. So let's start by 
We can take him off black mana, that might be relevant. Of course, we can't take him off black mana because of City of Brass, but then he'll, he'll City of Brass, but he'll take damage. So we, we just take out the black cleave cliffs. Then we play the Tavara as a land here. And now we can actually. Uh, then we can play the Master, but we can also consider just attacking in. And then we have the bounce effect up. This means that he takes. Yeah, the Master is decent as an attacker as well, even though we didn't play the other Master. Because he, it's not unblockable, but he needs to block with the Nakumobea. That's fine, let's get that off the ground. And now he's on 10. So if we're looking good to kill him next turn. Um, if he can't go off, come off. I'm considering again this Otovaro, should we play it or not? Let's just play it down. I don't think this is going to be relevant anymore. Yeah. So now he starts stretching. And he can otherworldly gaze. So this is just scary. He can corner, he can use uh, conflagrate. That's one of the things they can do. But we are on 11, so it's not not a catastrophe. We do have a blocker for amalgam, but I think it's fine just to take it here. This one, he can't really uh, use that one. So let's just take it going down to eight. I don't think that's the way he can kill us from the the conflagrate. He can't cast that one, so he just passes here. He didn't go off. That was great. And we drew the glass pool mimic, but we do have the lord as well. So let's just play the lord down. Activate the moon wall. Now we all in. We just get all in, and he, he lets us win the game. So we, we managed to beat Dredge. and we are two two in the league. Two two in the league. Last game. Um, last game of this league here uh, and i think it was interesting to 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 play against stretch uh Flusterstorm, which we just set out was a good counter spell but it could just as easily have been a spell pierce in this situation so if people have budget considerations that's one for you but there's different things that's really good about the 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 Flusser storm um also against uh, storm decks uh, it'll be really really strong this hand against he is <laughs> blue white red geist that's his name but it doesn't know if this is, is, is this also his deck it might not be i can't you can't normally trust <laughs> trust their names for example drow yan which is my name actually mean dragon hunter but i'm actually not in reality a dragon hunter i'm just a dude playing magic cards so you can't always trust it Turn one the vial. That's great. Let's uh, let's see what he got. Ooh, Yorkmoth, young wolf and Yorkmoth. This is one of the the tough matchups. Uh, okay, tight is interesting. Uh, it gives us another line. Uh, we can try to get him off green, and the tight is a much better blocker against uh, young wolf than than adept. Um, and yeah, then we, you would be using the Adept, um, you know, Merfolk, you can say, but but then again, we'll either while next turn. So I think it's actually better to get the, the Tide Shepherd down. Maybe we can do something by keeping him off green and and now having a good a good blocker for, for the Young Wolf. Mm -hmm. And he plays another Young Wolf. A very young one. And we draw a lot. That's a nice, nice play, a nice draw. Uh, so now, <clears throat> instead of having the adapt into the glass room, we can also just uh, play a Lord from either vial <clears throat> and play glass room mimic because. He only has an island, so there's no chance of him doing anything here. And actually, uh, but we can also just do the adept, and we get the march. That's interesting because adept. Uh, and now we can consider: are we doing lord or are we doing glass for mimic to copy something? But getting the lord down now is nice. Then we can get in for three, and next next turn we can do the lord tap. So he goes down to fourteen. This is the turn where he might be able to do something, but 
He could have Grist, for example. That would be pretty good, because then he can kill off Lord. We can copy it. So, the alternative line was to play two Lords. Um, and the March actually could be good in this in this situation. Okay, he's in the tank. He's thinking. He plays a Verdant Catacomb. And um, he just passed his turn. So that's really exciting. Thank you for letting us uh, be really, really um, on the edge, on the edge of our seats. And considering here to put, put it up so we can glass for him again, I think that makes a lot of sense. And we draw subtlety. Ooh, this was a great draw. The ri the risk the risk here of attacking uh, is big. So let's get the glass for Mimic down first to see if he has anything, but he doesn't. So now we can e easily attack in because this indicates that he has no removal spells. Of course, we can see do we attack him with the Lord or not. It's 11 points of damage. He's at 3. Looking good. We got the Salty, we got a March. And he, he plays Court of Calling. Can do anything about that. Get the Blood Riders down. Yeah. And now, of course, he's going to go for Yorkmoth with the combo. And we got the Salty. Uh, the March would also be fine here. So Salty, Salty is uh, pretty decent. The problem with Salty is that they also have the... Um, as you can see, the other... Uh, cards to tutor up creatures for, which are spells, so we can counter those. Relics are good because it did it, it um, works against undying. Considering if March is good, I think March could be decent. Spreading seas is also a consideration to cutting, but m many situations you need to to be able to um, get through unblockable with the, with the lords, and the spreading seas gives you another couple of ways uh, to do that. So. So maybe the Marxist is not that hard. I mean, we could cut maybe just one spreading seed, so we have one extra effect. And we need the dismembers for for Yorkmoth. We need the solitudes for Yorkmoth um, as well. What a great hand, Mulligan it. This is much better. Um, in the in the starting hand, I think spreading seed is good to just get back. Let's just take that one. And we can start by just playing a relic. Immediately a young wolf. It's still not the best starting... Uh, not the best starting play for him, young wolf. I'm much more uh, scared about the ignoble hierarch. So they can timbo out a Grist or a Yorkmoth or something. <clears throat> and he just passes here. So that's pretty good for us. Um, Glass Pool Mimic, yeah. Let's just see if we can take him off Black Banner. That means that uh, he's far away from, from casting Yorkmoth at this point. I think it's fine just to get the Tide Chipper down. Considering it could also be just to to uh, use Trickster on the Young Wolf, then it's, it loses Undying, that's pretty good. Just pass the turn here, okay. What do you have, sir? Next turn is the turn where he can be able to play um, Yorgmoth, which is pretty annoying. Um, so we're taking. Let him see if we wanna, he wanna do something. 
So we, we could be looking at a York Moth here and we can't really do that much about it. We can of course use Trickster in response. I think it's better maybe just to get the Vial down because we, we do have the Relic. So if you want to play York Moth and sacrifice Young Wolf, we'll just be able to remove it with Relic. So I think this is the time where the... It's now or never for the while if we, we want to have it as in play at some point. He convokes for one. Maybe finding another young wolf. Or maybe a noble hierarch. Yeah, that makes a lot more that lot more sense. And we got our relic value up and running. So this is one of the things that they do sometimes, the York Moth decks. They can adjust to being a kind of a mid-rangey aggro deck. Now we place uh, Yorkmoth. Not much we can do about this. Yorkmoth is a great card. We didn't have a salty ready. We didn't have anything. And we draw a tight shaper. Okay, but yeah, if we play the Lord, uh, we will be, we will have an unblockable, uh, which means we can get in for three. Uh, but he can kill off the Lord, and if you do if you do that, he can block. And then we, we, he could just take out his two creatures to kill the Lord. So that's that's the consideration here. And if you do if if we if we do that, he might he might just sack his noble hierarch, his young wolf. And yeah, we can make his young wolf not coming back, but um, it would still not be that interesting. So I think it's better to to maybe use trickster on the York moth at some point in his turn. And the next turn we are able to uh, to violin the master. So I think we just pass here, and then uh, let's see. Um, let's see if we can we can trick the the Yorkman at some point. It's always difficult to play against the Yorkmoth. I notice here that he finds the Dried Arbor. That's a great play. With the Mister Rainforest, we let, of course we'll exile it. We need to exile it now as he uses his. Uh, yeah, he's he's kill he's killing off the tide shaper, so this is where we needed to to crack the relic, so the undying creature leaves the grave uh, for permanently. Not 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 that great because he has if we have one more young wolf, he can start going off here. Now he cracks it for his dried armor, killing off the tide shaper. And the consideration is that we needed to trickster. Um, I think we need to 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 put some pressure on now. The rouse messenger is on now. Considering to trickster now, as we 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 might as well get the trickster. And this is not looking good. Uh, and it doesn't really matter that much because he won't do it anyways. He don't want won't really do that much against it. But the yogmoth is going off now, and we can't we can't do anything to stop it. So we need to draw this member. True Lord, so yeah, Lord is decent, but he can just kill it off again with the uh, with the York Moth. So we'll start by playing down the Tide Shaper, taking his off one of his manas. We can actually take the uh, we don't we can't take the uh, the peatland because he has water root, so he can just second response. Now we can play the Lord, and he can he might as well just be able to kill it, but. We we need to do something here to try to develop our board, and if he tries to go for that line, we do have the extra lord in hand. We can we can violin. So I think this is a, this is the right play to start to uh, see if we can build up our board. And uh, 
and, and we gotta get him down so the the effect takes him you know so it's costly to to sacrifice the creatures we take him down to eight here what do you what do you have the problem is that if he finds the combo now he has the giraffe messenger so he, if he finds the the combo with the the cutthroat ish creature now we got a young wolf that's a lot of things he can sack now i think he had the convoke so even though we were starting to beat down court of calling yeah not good but see now with court of calling he can find the, uh, the the winning last piece of his combo with the blood artist and uh, this means that he can now sack uh, all his creatures and kill us off or just you know sacker undying wolf it'll come it'll just go back and forth between the graveyard until we're dead and he gets alive every time so um well played by him we were one turn away from killing and he had the court of call and that was how i hoped that he didn't because our creatures were getting too big to to be able to handle so one one in the final one let's see if we can get a good finish on this um first first of three test runs i'm doing um testing different cards for the new meta here this is a good hand we have um not a, not a great hand but it's uh it's it's a chaining adept which can be fine here place a bird's paras that's a good start for him also nice to start with a um, mana dork uh, two lands that's maybe not the things we needed to draw and you can play grist now a turn two grist that is rough uh grist is one of the better cards against us i also play a lot with against uh Unt. And now we're getting all the islands and the lands we didn't get there earlier. But um, let's see if we can draw something. We get a Svaloon in. The problem with the Gris is that this 1-1 uh, insect token is actually absolutely fine against an adept because he will just block it. So This is not turning out pr that well. Um, Gris is a, a bad uh, card against triple cervical adept <laughs> draw here. So he's playing well, Mr. Geist over there. So we need to, if we can draw a Lord here, that would be pretty good. Then we can kill off the Grist. So yet again, a Lord is our best draw. One of the reasons why I like having eight Lords is that I often find myself saying that statement. And we do a Dismember. This is not the card for Dismember. This is not the matchup for Dismember. Uh, yeah, this is not the, the situation on the board for Dismember here. Um, so I don't think we have anything else we can do. Uh, we could of, of, of course gamble and, and play the uh, Spring Seas on a land uh, to see if we can hit the Lord or, or we can just play out Svealoon, which would be in instructive at this moment. Um, but if he, if, he, if he just able to kill off one Adept from, from any kind, then he can use Gris to kill it, so it's also kind of dangerous. But it is it is so, somewhat protected and the uh, Yawgmoth decks, they don't run that, that many, much removal. So let's get our Svealoon out. Not excited about this prospect, but uh, let's just do it anyways. Yeah, I think he has another card of calling here. Yeah. And he's finding what he's finding. This is interesting. He's finding a strangle root, guys. Okay. We do have an indestructible creature. Okay, what roots? Wall of roots. And you can use Eldrix Evolution here. This is not good. Uh, we can't do anything about it. So he gets the young wolf back in because of a dying trigger. And then he can find your Ralph Mister. It's uh, X plus two of the creature's sacrifice. So. He got a Gitira of Mesogen and two Insect Tokens. So he's really good. he's really boring out here. Strong mid-range play here. And we don't have any good targets for the Dismember. Everything has to undying. So we can't do anything like that. 
We do have the soaring uh, city and we drew another land. That's not exciting. Um, let's get him off the peatland at this moment. He won't be able to sacrifice it here. So uh, now we got an island on his side. And we didn't need to draw an island there or an Oboro. But uh, we do have this mem uh, Otowara uh, activation up, which could be relevant. Um, the attack from Svelun is just really not that good. And we need the kind of need the blocker at this moment. This is where Lord would be amazing. But so I think we're considering here should we attack with Svelun just to get the card draw. It's a free card draw. But I think it's better to stay back. And we do that, we can play a land and then we can play Otowara. So this is lining up and use thought sees. That's pretty unfortunate. So <sighs> yeah, we have two kind of bad cards. The adept is not really doing work and the dismember is not being able to be used here. So, but let's see, let's see what he chooses. Just the dismember, that's pretty interesting. And he plays blood artists. Okay. So that was actually a pretty good play by him, getting the... Uh, now he uses Grist, and sacrifice a creature. And when he does do this, he, he want to kill off the, uh, the Adept. It has Ward 1, he pays the Ward 1. And now uh, we can consider to Otovaro the Blood Arts now. Because he want to he wanna start attacking in. Now that he can't replay the Blood Arts. But his alpha here is strong, so. I don't think we can block with Sid look at that. We will be too far away from getting anything up and running. So we go to down to seven. We draw on uh, Merfolk, that's that's uh, of course fine. And then uh, Trickster is, is a pretty cool draw. So now we can tie here with the other Blooming Marsh, uh, which means that he, we won't get him off black though, but so he can still play the uh, Blood Arts next turn. And we can of course attack since we're on seven. But the in our blade, the last, but we can of course use trickster on it. So luckily he can attack in. And then we can use it when he attacks, so we can cheat him a bit here. But he uses now Grist to sacrifice, and I don't think we are able to to wait here and take the extra point of damage from when he sacrifices with Grist. So we need to tap the blood arrows down. And look, it, 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 this is looking good for him. He can kill up our tide chamber. Play the war trigger. But he, and he chooses just to pass so he can get his blood out and stop him running. And now we suddenly draw the Lord and he do have an island. So this is interesting. It's not lethal though. It's, it's only 13, So, but we can kill Grist, so let's just do that. And we, we draw the trickster. This is a really interesting uh, situation now. But the problem is that the artist is so dangerous at the moment, and he does have another Grist. This is a catastrophe. Um, we needed him to not have anything else. And then because of this, we need to, uh, when he uses this Grist, we can't take any more damage, so we need to tap the Blood Arch down. And he's probably getting annoyed that we <laughs> are just chaining tricksters here. But let's see if we can draw um, something here. He kill off the Lord. If we can draw a Lord here, but he yeah, but he can attack now, and he will attack now. And this is a tough one because we can survive, but uh, we need to trade off our entire board. Let's see, this is really bad blocks we have. We can. I think the correct one is to uh, yeah trade trade off with the uh, the root, uh, just jump the messenger and then uh, make two uh, tricks to survive here. So we go to one, or we draw, we the vault. Not gonna do it. Um, and I saw. See, that's not good. 
So interesting to uh, to see uh, the situation here. We had a, a, a yeah back and forth run here. I'm not ex entirely excited about how it went or all in all, but it was a decent test of different cards. And if we look specifically on um, the deck we played here, some of the things, the March of the Swirling Mist, which was an interesting tech. Um, I'm not convinced at the moment um, if this is uh, the right tech to do. As I think making our creatures unblockable is not um, the utilization of this card we need because we have that option already with the island work. I think I think that's our way to get a creature unblockable. Then of course it can be a temple play, but uh, it was good against the, the the red burn prowess deck. But that's a niche situation. Um, I did. I, I even you know was was you know. Um, word that it wasn't good enough against the Yawkmoth, and I don't think it is. So I'm not sold on this card yet, um, uh, and I don't. I, I don't think I will continue uh, testing it out here for the for the second version. Um, uh, other thing we we test out was uh, to play with Harbinger uh, right now. Uh, I think Harbinger did really well the time we we drew it, and I think in many matchups this this card is actually performing well now. In the situation where you don't have the either vial on two, it can still uh, work fine. Uh, it also gives us another merfolk. Uh, I, I like to have a critical mass of merfolk, so uh, I think Hybringers is in a decent spot at the moment. You can definitely play them. Um, are they main deck? Are they sideboard? I don't know, but I think I think they are, they are pushing on a they're pushing uh, their way into the, the starting 75. Could be accurate to use uh, right now. Really get good against Merc Tide. Bouncing uh, opposing Merc Tide is strong. Uh, bouncing and imposing uh, Death Shadow uh, with Dress Down. Um, that's of course doesn't work. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, that's actually a, a drawback. But but the Harbinger could could be pretty good here. Um, and the Frost Storm. Uh, didn't see uh, you know the full power of frost storm, but the, the times it uh, we had it against dredged, it was uh, it was nice. Uh, this card could be a decent uh, upgrade to uh, you can see I've it replaced my counter spells with frost storm, simply because um, of mana issues and uh, double blue is tough, and sometimes you need to be able just to counter some sort of non creature spell. I think there's a lot of aggressive uh, cascade decks as well that are using uh, non uh, you know non creature spells so here the frost storm would be a great catch uh, catch against um, against cascade decks as well uh, didn't get to take uh, test out hercules recall uh, i think this could much easy as also just be thieving skydivers i think those are also great to run at the moment um, and because Skydivers can also be sided in against uh, Grixis, Death Shadow or, uh, or Junt, where you need a critical mass of, of uh, threats um, and flying threats, and that those matchups are actually pretty good. Um, dismembers, ooh, they hurt us sometimes today. <laughs> we took some damage from the Dismembers. But I think they're a necessary evil at the moment. Uh, we still are not finding the perfect solution for interaction early. Um, so I think these members right now, I'm still running them, uh, and they might go back into the main deck, simply because they are necessary evil to to uh, combat all the uh, crazy uh, one drops that the, the the other guys have. But uh, this was uh, this was part one of uh, my uh, three uh, uh, three episodes here. I will be running with uh, trying to adjust the deck, and uh, and uh, and and adjusting the the list to the to the meta, testing out different cards. Um, and I'll be uh, back soon with uh, with a, a couple of other cards. And uh, if you want to stay tuned and, and make sure you know when I do that, I'm going to test out some really interesting uh, tech in the next run as well. Um, so subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Um, and you can follow me on uh, on uh, Twitter and Twitch to see where I go live. Um, and for the next one, I think we're going to have some really interesting uh, cards to, to, to display for you guys. So uh, if you want to see more cards and let me test them out before you go out and buy them or before you find out how good they are, um, come back next time and we'll have some more fun with uh, playing with Modern Merfolk in this uh, new meta here. But uh, thanks for watching and uh, have a good one. And see you next time.